I like to start off with death. <laughs> Some years ago, I saw, I was lucky enough to see Wayne Shorter at Jilly's. And his first number, he played this, it was, I think he played Footsteps, but the last five minutes of it were just this, this wail of white noise, and everybody's just, and then they just stop on a dime. And I leaned over to, some of you might know, Tucky Bailey, great saxophone player. She was sitting with me, me and Dick Roll. And I said, God damn, what do you do after the end of the world? And she looked at me and said, start again. <laughs> Pretty good woman. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep going. This is called a classical education. A real boy, an ordinary boy, I was never innocent, but on a recurring basis, I was amazing. Also brave, beautiful, afraid, angry, sad, ashamed, wild, curious, afraid, full of shit, mean, generous, selfish, surly, lost, cocky, afraid, afraid of being afraid. And yet and still, I still slept all night every night because I was lucky enough to be safe within my family and sleeping in a room with my two big brothers. And then without my permission, time did what it has to do, what it's always doing, and both of my brothers were gone, and that whole upstairs room was mine. And one day I'd love the change because I was alone, but the next day I'd hate it because I was lonely. But whatever I felt from day to day about my new arrangements, the atmosphere of my now solitary hideout, a couple things were clear. There'd be no going back to the way things once were, and like it or not, amazing or not, I wasn't a boy anymore. The end of childhood, for me, it happened fast like a god dying. For me, it was baffling, startling, unbelievable, like waking up and seeing a tiger asleep underneath the backyard swing set. Suddenly there were all these new rules I had to learn and follow, new ways to be a fool in public, new bruises delivered to places in my pride that never existed before, and more than a few routine, down and dirty, ain't life grand disenchantments to walk through and survive, all of which taken together made me old enough apparently to hear the story of how his wife died from Mr. Frost himself, a surprise that surprised me almost as much as my first wet dream. A taciturn, hawk-nosed ex-marine, the man hadn't said a dozen words to me in all the times I'd been in his store. But that afternoon, as I, as I paid for a bag of cheese popcorn, he stopped before handing me my change, little lucky strike, and like we were in the middle of a conversation about it, he nodded and said, right over there, in the vegetable aisle. That's where it happened. Just chattering away about her soap operas like she always did. It. And then I heard her whisper, my name, John, and, and then again a little louder, John, and right as I looked up from the cash register, boom, down she went like she'd been knocked out cold by a heavyweight punch, and just like that, she was gone. And my wife was gone. She didn't suffer at all, that's what the paramedic told me, dead before she hit the floor. He, he really said that. <laughs> said it twice, in fact, I, I guess the guy was trying to make me feel better, I guess. And then his voice trailed off, and the heavy tear in his left eye plopped onto the countertop. And with a shaking hand, he struggled to light another cigarette, and there were big circles of sweat under his armpits, and he smelled like sour whiskey and musty laundry, and clenching and unclenching his fists to stop the tears, he reached into a nearby cooler, pulled out two cans of shameling, tossed me one, and after using the church key and taking a big swig, he said, life is shit, Jim, don't ever forget it. Life is shit. And then he was crying hard, a grown man, ashamed of crying. Get out of here, he is. Get the fuck out of here. And I did, but before I did, because it seemed like the correct thing, the only right thing to do right then, I chugged the rest of my beer. <laughs> so, how many fucking Catholics in here? <laughs> I know there are. We ain't saying. We're not saying. <laughs> we ain't not fucking Catholics in here. We ain't going there, Jimmy. <laughs> but anyway, this is called a mostly true confession. <laughs> 